Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, font spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. At Unibet, Nigel's taking our casino action to the max. Hello, Nigel. Maximizing blackjack and top table games. Deal me in. Optimizing hundreds of slots with jackpots and coin combos. Cha-ching, baby! Arr, ahoy, matey! Ooh, loves the mania too. My favorite. Nigel is my first mate! I made it say that. Little bit of code. Unibet, home of all the games, home of all the action. Sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Unable to sell, say, billing record. What the fuck? Hello, hello. C qualifier here, Tanner Horgan, Brad Jacobs, Northern Ontario Tankard, presented by Unibet out of Kenora, Ontario. My name is Rory McCusker. I'll be commentating this game, this 10 end showdown. Two of the best teams in Canada doing battle at the Ontario, the Northern Ontario Provincial Playdown. This very well could have been the the uh, the tankard final 
back through some solid play by the pool, the field out here in Kenora. We've got two of the better teams in the country and therefore the world. Darren Molding holding the broom for Team Horgan. Anna Horgan registered out of Sudbury. Team Jacobs out of Sault Ste. Marie. Colin Hodgson and Tanner Horgan sweeping. Jake Horgan's rock down the ice. Team Jacobs with hammer, but the angles totally in the favor of Team Horgan so far. And that's a nice shot. Clears out the forefoot. Angles were definitely not favoring a score for Team Jacobs. Had to make something happen there. Unfortunately, they lose their own rock, but I think that was kind of always how that shot was going to go. Aaron Molding, going to throw up, kind of by purpose a guard, but they do want this in the rings. Top eight was the signal. Really looking for some curl out of this rock here. Get it in. Get it in. Colin Hodgson really leaning in, trying to get some movement. And they will. They get it back to the center line. More or less does the trick. They're hoping to cover a little more of the center line, but Jacobs is going to hit this regardless. Big weight coming down the ice. Oh, just blows by the second one. Probably the more important stone. Decision time for Team Horgan. Do they really want to go hard for a steal here? They've got a force basically already lined up here. They could remove the Jacob Stone, lie three in the rings. Looks like they'll attempt a corner freeze, asking Darren Molding to throw basically the same shot as his first one. Big flick outwards, try to keep that stone's momentum. Similar or the same as, as it was last time. Her factions, right where they tapped the broom. Just where they wanted that one. I guess I didn't see the overhead. It might be, might be a little higher than they're intending. Brad Jacobs does see an angle where they can bash this back and maybe keep the red in the rings as well as removing both stones in the, in the center line. Jordan Chandler being asked to execute that shot. Bam. Brad Jacobs knew it. And boy, does that ever flip the end around. Clears the rocks off the center line, exposes the Horgan stone on the button, 
and sensibly is going to force Tanner Horgan to address this stone on the wing. Big end flipping shot from Jordan Chandler there. Soft weight, control weight hit. Well executed, no clear double opportunity. That's taking a look. He might see an angle to make some kind of double there. No, he'll look to hit and roll group the Horgan Stones along the wing. Maybe keep a double for a blank type of opportunity around. Brad Jacobs' first shot in the first end. Team Jacobs still probably recovering from their earlier game. A magnificent game versus Sandy McEwen. In which McEwen moved on. Team Jacobs, quick bite to eat and right back on the ice. 2.30 here. Those 10 end games can be quite draining. Didn't quite get the full roll they are looking for, but... Really low stakes end here, this first end, with no guards anymore down the middle. It's fairly inevitable that Brad will have some type of shot for one point. Shot. Keep these rocks away from each other. Don't want to give Brad Jacobs a double and roll out for a blank. Definitely want to force him to shoot against something in the rings, and they're going to do that. Some nice separation. No double available. Brad Jacobs, shot for one, draw for one. They'll get it. Team Jacobs forced to one point in the first end here. They'll lead one nothing here in Kenora, Ontario. This land, this place, is alive. It is alive and it gives life to all living things that connect with it. This is Anishinaabeaki. Those who come here must also learn and understand the Anishinaabe way of life. And through that connection, strengthen their appreciation for this place. Learn to respect this place and learn to truly love this place. In Anishinaabe, when we call it Babik Wanika Sagegen. 
this is Lake of the Woods. Welcome back to Kenora, Ontario, the Unibet. Unibet, Ontario Tankard. Got Tanner Horgan, Brad Jacobs. Two of the best teams in the world, in Canada for sure. One out of Sudbury, one out of Sault Ste. Marie. Although these players would hail from all over. Second end here, we got quite an audience joining us on YouTube at least. I know this game's going to Facebook and some other places as well, but chime in on that uh, YouTube chat. Let's see who we got watching here and where you're watching from, who you're rooting for, all that stuff. We love to get to know our audience, and that YouTube chat is a great way of doing that. So chime in. Team Horgan making a lot of draws in the first end. It's always nice to get your draw weight early on like that. Forcing T Jake, Team Jacobs to hit. Try to roll. Brad making the first draw of the end on his last shot. This one will cruise into the top 12. So a guard just off the center line and a rock on the center line, but in the top 12. Not quite perfect, but. Certainly acceptable shots. Lead, Jamie Broad. Colin Hodgson. The young veteran. Been around for quite a while, been playing competitive curling his whole life. Now playing with Tanner Horgan, Darren Molding, Jake Horgan on this Northern Ontario team. Little tap. Not exactly sure what the call was there. Wasn't a lot of ice. Brad Jacobs will ignore that stone. Call a draw around. This has all the makings of a of a force slash steel end. Multiple obstacles down the middle. And one really good stone on on the button or in the forfeit at least. Those are the elements of a rest of the recipe you need to steal or force a point. This is gonna be way light. Gets to a fine spot. Line was good, just just pretty light there. On the outturn side. It's still going to protect the Jacob Stone in the forefoot. It's definitely going to contribute to the center line mess that Team Jacobs is trying to create. Just means that Team Horgan can kind of attack these centerline guards without much danger of of knowing that there's there's a steel stone in the top forefoot to deal with later. Would have been really nice to get that one right locked into the house. But instead, two center guards. Jake Horgan's gonna make an attempt at clearing these off. Gets one, gets two. Yes, the Horgan stone goes flying, but that's still a good result. Got two rocks off the center line. Did leave his shooter right on center. That was the call. But at least for the next run back, Team Horgan will be running a blue stone back instead of a red one. Team Jacobs will try to make that that shot in the top of the button, top of the forefoot, once again. This time coming deep, significantly deep. Really taps their other rock back. That's about back 12 weight. So Jacobs having some trouble finding draw weight here. It is early. It is the second end, but geez, those were two really good opportunities to bury one top eight, top four, really put the pressure on Team Horgan. It is going to succeed at convincing Team Horgan to play to the middle. They are now ignoring the guards. Trying to make their own shot to the top of the button.
Great sweep, trying to keep this one straight. It is going to overcurl a little bit. Not ideal, but they do get a rock in the forefoot. That's going to be useful no matter what. Just came a little deep and definitely overcurled for where they wanted to place it. With Team Jacobs lying one, no longer do they feel the pressure to get shot rock right now. They can leave this a little high, and that's still a good result. I think ideal, though, I think I saw Brad tap his broom. They do want this top button, lying two. Again, sweeping that rock to keep it straight. Or I guess at the end there, they're trying to make it curl into the blue stone. So some heavy draws here. Kind of biting Team Jacobs. Lots of opportunities to put their rocks in good spots, but just a little heavy so far on the seventh end or the second end here. Really leaning in, Colin Hodgson trying to get some curl. That's going to be a great angle. So just like that, with two half misses, half makes, I guess, from Team Jacobs, Team Horgan is able to re-establish re control of the forefoot. Now it's Team Jacobs with some work to do. It's going to take at least two shots to clear the trouble out of the forefoot. And that's assuming that Team Horgan doesn't make their shots as well. Definitely some trouble here, Team Jacobs. Brad signaling you can throw some weight, get rid of one of these blues by bashing the one into the other. Second blue rock probably spins to the back forefoot. But that would definitely be better than what they're looking at right now. Third rock thrower, Jordan Chandler. Oh, he made some great shots today in the earlier game. You're going to rely on him once again. Delicate shot here. Looks like they're playing soft weight. Wanting to keep that shooter around in the top of the forefoot. Once they make this tap, they want to leave that red right in the middle of the action. Wow, did that ever take off. Not sure if that picked or if the weight just came off it, but we could see from, from our camera angle there from behind the house, that rock just went sideways. Kind of unlucky because they really didn't spill that guard totally off as well. The, the guard is still in the way of any type of run back. This is looking pretty juicy for Team Horgan. They can put a rock in a good spot here. Brad Jacobs is going to be looking down the barrel of really kind of ugly looking forefoot. Pretty good spot. <laughs> that's that's as locked in as they get. Maybe sailed a little deep for what they were they were hoping, but now it's three Horgan rocks in the rings. I just wonder if 
that second, the middle Horgan stone will um, drag it all into the, the Horgan stone on the side of the forefoot. Brad Jacobs is certainly hoping so. I wonder if the call is to hit this right on the nose or if the call is to throw a bit of weight, try to peel those blue stones out of the forefoot. We're going to find out with this slide. One of the nicest slides in curling, Brad Jacobs. Big shot here with his first in the second end. Does not drag. They thought it might. It does not. That rock in the side of the forefoot is going to stay put. Second blue will kind of drift to the back of the forefoot. Some of the backing is now gone. It's going to be really difficult to get rid of both of those blues. From that straight on angle, we can see that there is a double run back, a blue onto red run back, where that second red guard comes into the house and maybe doubles off those Horgan blue stones in the forefoot. Right now, Brad's shot would be a tap freeze. So Team Horgan's gonna probably have to, have to take that intern tap freeze out of the picture before they worry about any kind of run back. You can see Darren signaling top button, a little bit on the high side of center line. Fairly interesting. I don't know if that takes away a potential freeze. I'd be tempted to draw this stone onto the opposite side of the center line, maybe taking away both tap freeze and double run back. But hey, this team, this team's got an idea of what they want, so. Tanner Horgan, his first stone in the second end. Looking to score a pile here against Brad Jacobs. That's going to come up just a little shy, but that's that's the line that they were looking for. Very usable stone. If Brad was to make a tap freeze, an intern tap freeze, you can use that stone just thrown by Tanner to run back into Brad's attempt. And either way, this is going to be a massive shot from Brad Jacobs. It's big swing here. Potential three for Tanner Horgan. All the way down to a potential steal of one for Brad Jacobs if he makes this next one perfect. Brad Jacobs, no stranger to pressure. No stranger to being relied on. And it's just what I was picturing. It's this intern tap. Try and get shot rock on the side of the forefoot. Leave some Horgan stones behind you to, to cushion, to give some backing. And there's a chance that this, uh, this stone ends up in a spot that's going to be either very difficult to remove or maybe even impossible to remove. If he can get like a one foot tap on that Horgan stone on the T-line. Brad Jacobs, big shot here. Keep the game close. Last rock in the second end without hammer. Sweepers are off it for now. Trying to get some curl. Oh, they tick. They tap. They roll. That actually ended up in a pretty good spot. Are they shot stone? It's tough to tell. If Darren's looking that hard, then I, if he doesn't know, then I certainly don't know. Darren did signal. We, we might want to tap our own up. 
which would indicate they are shot in the back of the forefoot. Just too hard to tell. Did Brad Jacobs roll far enough to put that stone out of reach for Tanner Horgan? Is there no way to, to tap that one up? I think there is. So with Darren giving ice out in the eight foot here, I think that does indicate that they'll go for a tap on the previously thrown Horgan stone. They must think that they are shot in the back of the forefoot. Nearly missed. But curls just enough to make contact with the stone that they needed it to. Gets a little bit of a lucky wick off the top. That's okay. Last rock, Tanner Horgan. Lots of communication between sweepers here. Well communicated. That's a great team shot. It'll be one for sure. They'll take a look for two. You can see the tap. That's two points. Tanner Horgan. Well played end. Once again, Tan Team Horgan off to a red hot start early. In this one, they'll lead two to one. Jacobs will have hammer in the third when we return to Kenora. Okay, Nigel, ready for parlays. Game on, baby. Activating single game parlays for all your favorite sports. Touchdown! Nice moves, Nigel. Unibet, home of all the parlays, home of all the action. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Welcome back to Kenora, Ontario. The Unibet Northern Ontario Tankard. Team Horgan putting on a clinic so far. I'm not sure if they've they've clean out missed a shot. They've had some half makes here and there. Team Jacobs had a lot of opportunity to set up a four foot situation that was favorable to them, but they kept coming heavy on their draws. As a result, Team Horgan was able to take control of that valuable top button, top four foot area. And as the skippers traded shots, Brad Jacobs was able to sneak a rock in to prevent a huge end. Ended up forcing Team Horgan to play a shot for two, which in the context of that second end, I'd be pretty happy if I was Team Jacobs. Only giving up two there. We'll try again in the third. Delayed corner guard strategy. Horgan putting their first one in the, the rings. Team Jacobs doing a nice job of rolling on their hit out to the wing. Keep going. Roll it. Roll it. Team Horgan rolls it back to the forefoot. So two made shot or three i should say completed shots 100 percent shots but that's the beauty of the delayed corner strategy team jacobs has now converted a rock in the front of the forefoot to a rock in the back of the forefoot through two hit hits and rolls that's a textbook delayed corner guard strategy oh lead rock thrower 
Jamie Broad looking to make good on this delayed corner strategy. We want this to come a little deeper than halfway. We'll get about halfway. That's perfectly acceptable. 100% at lead so far this end for both teams. Aaron Molden calling for a three from second rock thrower Jake Horgan. With only two games on the ice right now, we're getting some great in-game audio. You can hear the players call sweeps. You can hear the brushes scrub a little bit. Gotta love that. Pretty good draw or guard there. Didn't quite curl enough, but given that Team Jacobs is gonna try to hit and roll off this one anyway, I don't think it totally mattered exactly where they put that. Oh, this is looking really good. Ah, it rolled just a little bit too far, but that's a great shot to convert a center guard into a, a rock in the side of the 12 foot. Not quite buried, but definitely makes this hit a little more challenging. Even if Team Horgan is to make this hit and stick, Team Jacobs will have successfully brought play away from the center line over to the wing, which is where they'll try to score there too. The key to that strategy being if things go awry, you at least have the forefoot open to, to draw for your one point. So well executed strategy so far from, from Team Jacobs, even though Team Horgan has made all of their shots. And Jacobs, through making their shots, were still able to establish play over in the wing instead of the center line. Nice hit and stick. Team Horgan there. It's a nice bonus to keep that one in the rings. That rock might be usable later. Might be able to run that back if, if Jacobs ends up making a nice setup here in the wing. Real soft release. Second rock thrower, Kyle Chandler. Expect this rock to curl. Getting some great action over there. That's a good shot. Sweepers took it just a shade deep, but that's going to do the trick. Darren Molding. Too heavy to speak. Solid. Oh, Darren coming a little deep himself. Not ideal. They are shot rock, but that is going to only serve as backing to Team Jacob's future draws. Darren will not be too happy with that. For Team Jacob's, it's okay to come a little deep. There's still a chance that you might count that stone, but for Team Horgan, really, the, the point of that shot was to cut off access to that draw path to the wing around the guard. So coming deep there kind of defeats the purpose of the team without hammer.
Get some curl out of this. It's gonna be pretty good. Another decent tap. I think I think Team Horgan is lying one, two, three at the back of the house. This has been fairly intriguing to watch these trades take place. Sorry, I just I'm realizing I haven't been speaking too much about it, but it's just a repeat of the same shot over and over. It's just who's gonna make the the good result and who's not. I think Team Jacob Stones have been effectively pushed to the side. And Team Horgan already lying three going to try to choke off this kind of freeze angle that Team Jacobs might have. Pretty interesting. Team Jacobs got the kind of results, got the, the setup that they were looking for. And even though they were more or less making their shots, Team Horgan was being a little more specific. Oh, wow, that just took off. Not sure if that picked or just caught some curl, but it really, really started going sideways. One, two, three, four, Team Horgan lies. That blue stone is going nowhere. Yeah, Brad's already looking at a huge weight hit and roll. Maybe get a double as a bonus. I just don't see how you're going to get rid of all four of these stones. Big shot. Brad Jacobs trying to set up two points here in an end that really has not been going their way. One, two, and they roll up exactly where they wanted to. That's a pretty excellent shot. It's exactly what Brad Jacobs signaled he needed to do. Really impressive.
Morgan electing to draw. Why not? They've just thrown this shot. Looking for this one to hold on. Ah, it just bounces off. Ah, unfortunate bounce. That was a pretty specific spot they were trying to get to. Tough look for Team Horgan and Brad Jacobs' ma magnificent hit and roll to lie one. It's going to pay off. They're going to have a more or less open shot for two here. Last rock, Brad Jacobs in the second end here in the C qualifier, Unibet, Northern Ontario Tankard. Called hack out of his hand. Ooh, jams on the back one. Rolls quite far. They'll get one for sure. Did that jam prevent them from scoring two? I think they got two. They'll have to take a close look here. The shooter is the first shot. Looks like Tanner has taken a look. It's going to be two points for Brad Jacobs. What a display by Brad Jacobs himself. That hit and roll in his first shot. Sets up the two points, and they do get a multiple score end here to go up two to one after two ends here in Kenora. Three to two. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Okay, Nigel, ready for parlays. Game on, baby. Activating single game parlays for all your favorite sports. Touchdown! Nice moves, Nigel. Unibet, home of all the parlays, home of all the action. Welcome back to Kenora, Ontario. Unibet, Northern Ontario, tankered. This is the C qualifier to determine one of the last playoff spots. Team Horgan out of Sudbury. Team Brad Jacobs to St. Marie. Really well played game from both leads so far. That's a made corner guard. Nice and tight to the rings. It's exactly where they would want it. Team Jacobs kind of got caught in between on the first stone. The 1-2 game of this page playoff already set. Trevor Bruneau, Sandy McEwen, they'll play at 7.30 p.m. Mike Craig, 
the 3 4 game is yet to be set. The winner of this game will play the winner of Team Jibota, Jilbota, and Team Carr. Morgan forced to take that one right to the back of the eight foot. Missing a little deep. That's going to provide backing for Team Jacobs. And this end is definitely taking shape. To be a, a potential steel end for Team Jacobs. Jeez, even deeper for Team Jacobs. This quick path of the ice really tricking these two teams. Team Horgan will get another opportunity. That's a that's a big miss for Team Jacobs. Jake Horgan gets to make good on his previous miss. See if he can't take a little bit of weight off of this. Maybe get it a little further outside. Allow for some earlier curl. Definitely a slower slide. These mics picking up the player sweep call very well today. He's not able to correct, still puts it deep. You can see the body language, Team Horgan, that's a big opportunity missed. Whoever gets their stone in the scoring position, the top four, top button area first, is going to dictate this end. So far, neither team's been able to do so. Deep again. Four rocks in a row deep. Second second rock throw is just not able to figure this one out. Jake Horgan's turn to adjust. He threw his first one deep. Unlock those stones. I'm not exactly sure what the weight call was. I, I guess I assumed it was supposed to be T-line weight. They called back line out of his hand. Everyone seemed kind of pleased about that. So I'm going to assume that that was the call. Corgan Stone locked on back of the button with two potential counters in the very back of the house.
locks that stone on to the top of the button. That's going to be a good spot. I think it changed the angles just enough. But if you bash that top red, I think the, the red in the back of the eight foot is still going to stay safe. So some more soft weight coming from Team Horgan. Seem to like it. Gets those angles back in favor. Team Horgan. Really good bounce back. Some misses early on in this end, but both teams getting it together. It beside the blue, we heard Brad say. Sweepers on this one right away. Team Jacobs kind of guarding for their life at this point. They they recognize that they might not get another opportunity to be shot rock. Well, it's in the way. It's going to make a double peel very easy. Fortunately, grouped those stones. Kind of not in the right way. Not in the way that they were looking for. You hear Brad say, uh, by the blue, or I, I think he meant kind of that, that height. Just a little bit light. Big delivery from Darren Molding. Makes them go away. That was the call. And it was made. That would have been nice if that would have been a little stayed right there. Team Jacobs in some trouble here. Those angles are very scary as far as I see it. If that blue one gets hit anywhere around nose, the currently shot red comes back into the other red in the back of the eight foot leaving at least three blue stones, three uh, Horgan stones to count. So Jacobs is going to try to take away any type of run back that's going to result in the blue rock in the top of the forefoot getting contacted. Team Horgan, on the other hand, is going to be looking for any kind of run back that's going to unlock those two stones in the button, score at least one, maybe two, maybe three. And if you had ever figure out a way to run a blue one in there maybe even four points for team horgan so playing with fire teams J team jacob still shot one for for now they will try to guard that stone with brad jacobs first here in the fourth end
And in the run back now. One, two. Oh, just skinnies by. Still a good result. Tanner Horgan's going to open up the forefoot. Jeez, that was close. Just sent it skimming by. They do get rid of the red in the back of the eight foot. So there's a little bonus. They do keep two blue stones in the back of the 12 foot, another bonus. So still dangerous here for Brad Jacobs. An out turn run back was just thrown by Tanner Horgan. If you leave him another one, very good chance he makes the adjustment. You heard them say, well done. What a shot. Blocks it right onto the back one. Eliminates the opportunity to score a million. Team Horgan might have a shot for two. They're just lining up right now where they can roll their shooter to to make sure that they get enough of the forefoot to out count that stone in the back of the four that Brad Jacobs just threw. That was the beauty of Jacob's shot. Not only did he freeze on the back blue so he, his red one could not be removed, they were able to stop with enough of the forefoot that it's going to be quite challenging for Team Horgan to catch enough of the forefoot with their shot rock. They will be able to whap the blue back, get the red rock off the button. Team Horgan will be able to count one no matter what. It's just a matter if they think they can roll their shooter into count two, they'll call time out here. Take a closer look at this. See if it's worth it. So far in four ends of play, Team Horgan outplaying Team Jacobs. No mistake about that. Brad himself, Brad Jacobs himself, has thrown multiple shots this game already that have saved his team, given up a big end. Big sweep. With some spin. Got it in the forefoot. It's just like Colin Hodgson and Darren Molding said. There's that experience shining through. Good discussion. Good call. Everyone needed to be on the same page with that one. Everyone needed to have the confidence that if they hit it where they said they would, it would roll in. They are taking a peek at this. I thought it was two for sure. 
they may end up putting a stick to this. Well executed shot no matter what. They couldn't really afford to hit it much thinner than that. They didn't want to squirt the the blue that they were running back. That That is the rock that had all the momentum. You really couldn't hit that one at too much more of an angle or else you risked it squirting out of the forefoot. They will put a stick to this. We do have an official here to measure. Points to the blue stone. It is two points for Team Horgan. Great game continues. Four to three Team Horgan leads. Brad Jacobs will have the hammer going into this fifth end. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. At Unibet, Nigel's taking our casino action to the max. Hello, Nigel. Maximizing blackjack and top table games. Deal me in. Optimizing hundreds of slots with jackpots and coin combos. Cha-ching, baby! Arr, ahoy, matey! Ooh, love so many too. My favorite. Nigel is my first mate! I made it say that. Little bit of code. Unibet, home of all the games, home of all the action. We are back in Kenora, Ontario. Team Horgan, Team Jacobs, C qualifier. Win and you're in, lose and you go home.
both teams fighting for the chance to represent Northern Ontario at this year's Briar. Delayed corner strategy once again, Team Jacobs. Won't quite get the roll they're looking for. The goal will be to clear these Horgan stones out of the forefoot area. Get Team Jacob stones over to the wing. Try to use that corner guard that they threw earlier in the end. Normal right on the nose, you'd hear Brad say. So just focusing on getting these two Horgan rocks out of the way. Tanner Horgan only up one point, but still doesn't see a great opportunity to steal or set up a force. So he'll go ahead and clear the danger, peel this corner guard, make sure Brad Jacobs doesn't have much to work with, trying to score multiple points in the fifth end. And you can hear from Darren's frustration. That is a flash peel. Placing that guard is going to sail a little deep. Or sorry, coming around that guard. Gonna sail a little deep. Need this to stick around. Piece of the 12 foot. It will not. Comes right through the rings. Team Jacobs getting caught. More often heavy than light. Another rock in the forefoot. Interesting that they didn't want to peel the guard again. I guess Team Horgan, doing the math, sees that Team Jacobs only has three rocks left, so they'll have to clear out the Horgan stones before they draw around the corner guard. So, knowing that they only have a few rocks left to do that, Team Horgan comes into the rings again. Will force Team Jacobs to make a double or at least a hit and roll.
trading hits. This is looking more and more like a forced end for Team Jacobs. Once again, they'll rely on Brad to make a few shots here. First, they'll need a nearly perfect freeze. Nearly perfect because the line has to be perfect too. Team Horgan will have a shot at removing the freeze on both the outturn and intern sides. So line's got to be perfect. Weight's got to be perfect. And even then, there might be an opportunity to, to get rid of it or to hit and, hit and stick right on top. Odds are long, but don't tell Brad Jacobs that. He's been making shots all day. And we'll be asking another one from him here. His first shot in the fifth end. Down one point with hammer. Big wait, Tanner Horgan. Wow. So even though that freeze was made nearly perfectly, just showing a few inches on the one side was all it took. Now it's it's not all bad. Uh, Jacobs has now forced Team Horgan to roll out. All those rocks went flying, so it will be a blank attempt. In the fifth end, the odd end, blank here, will slightly improve... Team Jacobs' chances of winning gives them the hammer in the sixth end to make a more impactful score. Great freeze on his first one. Brad Jacobs just needs to roll out of the rings. Last rock, fifth end. Pretty successful result, Team Jacobs, after all that. They will manage a blank. They will clear those rocks of the rings. And they will have Hammer. Down one in the sixth end. They'll take a little fifth end break. Little uh, mop and pebble, it looks like. Or I don't know why he's holding the pebble machine. We will find out <laughs> when we come back after five ends of play here in Kenora, Ontario. This land, this place, is alive. It is alive and it gives life to all living things that connect with it. This is Anishinaabeaki. This is Tree Three territory. And our visitors to this sacred place have a responsibility outlined in that treaty. Those who come here must also learn and understand the Anishinaabe way of life. And through that connection, strengthen their appreciation for this place. Learn to respect this place and learn to truly love this place. In Anishinaabe, when we call it Babikwanika Sagegan, this is Lake of the Woods. Okay, Nigel, ready for parlays. Game on, baby. Activating single game parlays for all your favorite sports. 
Touchdown! Nice moves, Nigel. Unibet, home of all the parlays, home of all the action. Sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Okay, Nigel, ready for parlays. Game on, baby. Activating single game parlays for all your favorite sports. Touchdown! Nice moves, Nigel. Unibet, home of all the parlays, home of all the action. The Roaring Game. We all love it, but sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. Don't get stuck in your curling club this year. Learn the game inside and out. Play for your favorite country and take the curling world by storm. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Welcome back to Kenora, Ontario. Unibet, Northern Ontario Tankard, play down the C final. Two incredible teams. Brad Jacobs, Tanner Horgan. A lot of experience, a lot of high level men's experience on the ice right now between these two teams. Team Jacobs, bit of a rough start. Rough first half, I'd say. Quite a few missed draws. Getting them in trouble. A lot of bailout shots from Skip Brad Jacobs. We'll see if the team can bounce back, set up some opportunities for Brad to make some shots from multiple points. Team Horgan has been right on the ball, just hasn't quite countered Jacobs' high level shot making ability. A few misses here and there for Team Horgan, but overall, I'd give the edge to especially lead through third Team Horgan here. Colin Hodgson. Try to put his rock in, in front of the T-line. Oh, 
Weight looks really nice. What a shot. Finally getting his line and weight in order. Colin Hodgson makes a perfect draw to the top of the forefoot. That's a nice response from Colin. Looking to answer. Lead rock thrower for Team Brad Jacobs, Jamie Broad. Little tap, but he's going to put his, his stone right where Brad tapped. His broom. Leaving a bit of separation, though. It's going to allow Team Horgan to either tap it back or get an angle on the nose. Just a six inches too much weight there. unfortunate tick off the guard there they would have been much better just fully racking on that guard you could see Darren Molding say my fault bit of a miss sweep really unfortunate they're gonna tick the Jacob Stone to the perfect position corner frozen and shot rock really unfortunate results almost made a shot for the opponent there Wow. Wonderful management of angles there. That's Darren Molding's in-house experience shining through. Knew exactly how those rocks would leave the rings. Really impressive. Now it's two Horgan stones left in the rings. Five rocks to come for Team Jacob. Still lots of opportunity to create a multi-score end, but they're going to have to do so with basically a center guard in the way and with Team Horgan having control of the house at this moment. Good bounce back from Team Jacobs with their draw weight, though. Um, you heard me say as this end started, they've been throwing a lot of draws heavy, not using their sweepers. This sixth end was a really good bounce back from the front end of Team Jacobs. Speaking of bounce back, that's going to be second rock thrower, Kyle Chandler. Making a nice hack weight hit around the outside. Got a little flop in as well as a little bonus. I don't think there's a way for Team Horgan to roll in towards the center guard. I think they're going to have to be satisfied with just removing this stone. Perhaps even rolling out a little bit, leaving an opportunity for Team Jacobs to answer with a hit and roll of their own. Really flipped that one out here in Molding did. Lots of room around the guard. Big sweep from Jake Horgan. He's going to hold it. That rocks just as good over there as it would have been a foot off of the guard. I mean, it's going to leave a draw opportunity for Team Jacobs, but looking more and more like someone will be scoring this end. Blank is looking pretty far off. Jordan Chandler 
taking the rock. This is the leads, or sorry, the third's first stone. Four rocks to come for Team Jacobs, including this rock coming down the ice. Weight looks pretty good. Sweepers on and off. Hoping this one slows down and stops. Doesn't want to over curl, and it does. It'll leave at least two thirds of the stone exposed. Darren Molding's going to have the exact same shot as before. That looks like a little cleaner of a throw. Nice, nice throw by Darren. That one's gonna stay right, right where they wanted it. Good adjustment from Darren. Missed the first one outside. Made the correction. Got the perfect result on the second attempt. Does what was asked, kind of got caught in between. You'd think that Team Jacobs would have either liked to stay right on the nose, get a little flop inside if they ever could, or roll that stone right off to the wing, give themselves some backing. leave Team Horgan an opportunity. This stone is high enough in the rings that they can take a roll behind the guard without risking giving Team Jacobs any kind of backing. Risk-free roll attempt here, Tanner Horgan. I've said this a few times, another good opportunity to try and force Team Jacobs to one point. Well, last time I said that, Brad Jacobs himself manufactured two. And then in the fifth end... <laughs> Uh, Jacobs was able to create a blank. So, I don't want to take anything for granted against Brad Jacobs. Really trying to curl this one over. It's a little roll. Will be enough of a roll that I don't think they've left a, a counter roll, a counter inside roll for, for Brad. I think Brad's going to be better off drawing. Yep. And he agrees. See, you just giving the sweepers some info there. Got to make this one next to perfect. Too deep, and they'll leave a run back for Tanner Horgan. Too shallow, they won't get shot rock. So it's got to be just in the top eight foot. Only about a foot and a half of rim for this one to stop. Calling T-line, which is too heavy. Just a little too much juice on this one. Sweepers didn't have much to work with. And 
and this will go all the way back for third shot. Not good enough. Tanner Horgan, Darren Molding, full respect to Brad Jacobs. They know that if there is a shot for two, Brad's got a good chance of making it. So rather than put their stone in a place where they think they might steal, I think that they're more concerned with making sure they don't leave any type of triple. Hear Darren describe it. It's got nothing for two if we're here. There's there's always going to be a shot for one. They could try to get a like a sliver of the button, try to make try to make uh, Brad Jacobs draw that much harder. But instead, they're going to ensure that they put this in a spot where there is no shot for two. Team Horgan has all the reason to be confident and play this safe. Team's been playing really well. Curling really hard, this stone. And it'll settle inside of the button. Nothing wrong with that. If there is a shot for two, it's it's extremely difficult. That, Jeez. I don't even know if there is a triple there. You'd have to hit it so hard. Just checking in on the chat earlier on. I asked everyone to chime in. Let me know where they're watching from. Lots of great responses. Really appreciate everyone participating in the chat. We just, we love getting to know, getting to know our audience and see who these curling stadium broadcasts are serving and who all's watching from where. So thank you so much for chiming in on the chat. I'm looking at Brampton, Ontario, cheering from Vancouver Island. Cherry Kina, Karen Stratzma watching from Brampton. Oh, and my favorite, Auntie Bet and the girls are cheering you on from Blind River. Jason and Kyle, go Team Jacobs. That's the girls trip to Blind River. That's, uh, they were commenting on the game earlier. That's awesome. Hello, ladies. Penticton, VC. Sherry Laporte watching from Lumby. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Steven chiming in from Sycamus. Charlotte, North Carolina, Kyle Fisher. Love that. Price Atkinson, my boy. Down in the Carolinas. Ham Lake, Minnesota. Hello, Amanda. Brad Jacobs. Last shot here in the sixth end. Forced to attempt one for one point. Little bit deep. It is going to be a steal of just one. Team Horgan putting the pressure on. Finally get a little crack out of Brad Jacobs. Two deep draws. It's going to mean a 5-3 lead for Team Horgan. Jacobs will try to bounce back in the seventh end with Hammer. Down two points.
Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Okay, Nigel, ready for parlays. Game on, baby. Activating single game parlays for all your favorite sports. Touchdown! Nice moves, Nigel. Unibet, home of all the parlays, home of all the action. Welcome back, everyone. Kenora, Kenora Ontario host. C qualifier, everything on the line. A spot in the three-four playoff game, page playoff game, is what these two teams will be playing for. Trevor Bonneau and Sandy McEwen are in the one-two game. That will be at 7:30 p.m. tonight. And the winner of this game will play the winner of Cody Carr and Chris Gilbota. That will also be at 7.30. Jeez, tough game. Tough day for uh, for Team Jacobs, at least. I'll have to look at the line scores, but that'll be three 10 end games if Team Jacobs is able to move on here. Team Horgan had the morning off, taking the ice for the first time for this 2.30 p.m. matchup. Jay Corgan. Second rock thrower for Team Horgan. Look at that center line. One, two, three guards. Perfectly down the middle. Just that few inches of overcurl might give Team Jacobs an opportunity to get rid of all three rocks here with a well-thrown, a well-thrown bomb. Kyle Chandler looking to respond. And that's going to be significantly outside. Only going to peel one. Yeah, you only get so many cracks at that. The sooner you make that first double, the sooner you're going to be able to... Ooh, a conservative call here. Recognizing the real danger is this corner guard setup the Team Jacobs has. Darren Molding going to call for a corner guard peel. Big slide, powerful throw from Jay Corgan. And they'll make it just fine. Two rocks down the ice and two less rocks in play. Peels from either team.
Yep. See, so Team Jacobs is going to have an opportunity to make this double and roll their shooter over for a corner guard. That's just didn't quite understand why Team Horgan wasn't tempted to throw another center guard, but one, two, and the roll. Aren't able to roll it totally over, but uh, that's still going to be a useful shot. Once once Team Horgan removes this rock, it's going to be their playground. Team Jacobs has four rocks to come. They have a guard off center, and they'll have a Horgan rock somewhere in the 8-foot or 12-foot. Pretty good exchange for Team Brad Jacobs over the last three or four rocks or so. Even though everyone was more or less making their shots, I'd actually argue that Team Jacobs missed an opportunity for that kind of triple, that double run back. Anyways, through some strategical decision-making, Team Jacobs is going to find themselves in a position where they are going to have a rock to the wing to draw around, some backing perhaps, depending on where Team Horgan leaves this stone. So a two-point lead, not looking that big right now. It's like we'll see a hit and roll here from Team Jacobs. Try to make use of this new guard that they have, blocking the left side of the forefoot. With a huge sweep, they get that rock by. What a great effort from sweepers there. Yep, Jamie Broad, Kyle Chandler really leaning into that one. Got it by the guard by just a whisker. One, two, three, clears all rocks out of the rings. Aaron Molding, big run back. Gets the double and maybe accidentally clears their blue rock out of the side of the 12 foot. That was never really a huge objective to that shot. Two point lead, fairly comfortable. Team Horgan is with leaving some, uh, with removing their own stones. I wouldn't love it if uh, Team Jacobs blanked this end. They'd really like to make Team Jacobs score. And with two points down, I think Team Jacobs will be putting their rocks in the rings, making sure that they do score. Team Jacobs could peel the, the guard off right now and just try to go for a blank. But with an open house and a corner guard, three rocks to come, they will go for multiple points. They get that one nice and buried. It is behind the T-line, but... Still, buried stone. Darren got a little too excited there. I thought it was his shot still. <laughs> Tanner Horgan's first rock, 7th out. One and two. Two excellently thrown, called, swept run backs from Team Horgan. One from Darren Molding, one from Tanner Horgan. Brad still got his opportunity. They'll put another one back there, force Tanner Horgan to throw another run back.
And even if Tanner Horgan makes that run back, it'll be an open blank attempt. So not a lot of risk here for Team Jacobs. May as well try to get two. Sweepers aren't going anywhere near this. It's not curling either. Jeez, Brad had missed two heavy draws in the sixth end. wonder if he's heavy again here. He is. As long as they're buried, that's still a pretty good result. It is deep enough now, though, that Team Horgan will... I don't think they're chasing it, but they're going to follow it down. As long as they're anywhere within a foot or two of that red rock, it's going to be next to impossible to remove it so bit of a miss there brad jacobs coming deep two deep draws in the sixth end now a deep draw in the seventh end Tanner horgan has been playing very well looking for one more shot out of him in the seventh end here last rock without hammer Hard for line, they're saying. They want to keep this on the inside. Don't want to leave a tap opportunity. Jeez, that thing really died. Weight came off it, and it started curling very, very hard. So, bit of a miss there. There is a tap opportunity. You can see Brad signaling with his broom. All we need is about a quarter of that rock. They'll throw just past backline weight. Jacobs, his last rock in the seventh end. He's gonna make a really tough tap around the guard for two points. A little less, the sweepers say. Line looks really good. Are they able to get, to get this over? Taps the blue. Pushes it back far enough. Will the shooter stick around? Oh, the shooter just rolls too far. What an attempt. It will be one point for Team Jacobs. Geez, so close. Another inch of that rock, and they're able to hold their, their shooter in there. But it will be a single point in the seventh end. Team Horgan, a controlling one-point lead with Hammer when we come back. This land, this place, is alive. It is alive and it gives life to all living things that connect with it. This is Anishinaabeake. This is Tree 3 territory. And our visitors to this sacred place have a responsibility outlined in that treaty. Those who come here must also learn and understand the Anishinaabe way of life. And through that connection, strengthen their appreciation for this place. Learn to respect this place and learn to truly love this place. In Anishinaabe, when we call it Babi Kwanika Sagegan. This is Lake of the Woods. Thank you. 
Welcome back to Kenora, Ontario, the Unibet, Northern Ontario Tankard. Really exciting attempt from Brad Jacobs. At the end of that seventh end there, he had missed. He'd come deep on three draws in a row, Brad Jacobs had. Needed a big one. To try and keep his team tied up in the C qualifier. Came a little deep. Or, or sorry, just couldn't quite get the angle on that tap back. hear him say there this is the big shot here brad knows this is the opportunity to get two separated guards lined up down the center line raises the stakes and his team responds two excellent guards both teams playing quick right in the hack and throwing it's been a good game for both leads well executed. Can't leave this light. Really don't want to leave this light if you're Team Horgan. They do get it into the 12 foot. That's a great sweep. Still ended up a few feet light, but that's that's a terrific result from the sweepers. And you can see Darren giving his thanks. Hey, great sweep, guys. Both teams kind of feeling it. This eighth end is really the critical mass sort of end. No matter what the score is, if you score, if you your team has managed to, to get at least one point in the eighth end, you significantly improve your chances of winning the game. Even if it's just a single point. Just that end math, the way the ends go back and forth. Eighth, ninth, tenth. You want to score in the eighth, force your opponent to have hammer in the ninth. Get hammer back in the 10th. So Team Jacobs, knowing that, that I just described in the 8th end, they'll go hard for a steal here. Doing their very best steal. One point. Anything more than that is going to put them at a pretty extreme disadvantage. One guard goes away. I imagine Team Horgan will be peeling... Pretty consistently descend until they have a crack at the button or the middle of forefoot. Decision time for Brad. Halfway, they say. So it looks like another guard coming down the ice here. Yes, cruised a little deep there. Definitely not ideal. They're hoping to put that more on the Unibet logo in the center of the free guard zone. The double peel that Team Horgan was looking for. That's going to do a lot of good opening up that button four foot area. With two rocks, one in the top four foot, one in the top 12 foot, all Team Horgan really needs to do is get rid of that, that one red stone on the button to give themselves a really good chance of winning this game.
Darren Molding. Playing some soft weight. Hear it in the voice. Both teams know how important this eighth end is. Team Jacobs has survived so far. That rock on the button has not gone anywhere. Quite a few stones now. They're going to try to make it for six more. Really big a steal to tie the game would be. You can hear Darren say, one more. One more peel, and then we'll have to make an attempt at that rock in the rings. Team Horgan makes the shot happen. The shot being their attempt at removing the redstone on the button. Team Jacobs will still have two shots left as, along with a center guard. So Team Horgan's figures if they peel this one, then let Jacobs replace the guard, then make the shot, the shot removing the red from the button. Then Team Jacobs will only have one rock left. So Team Jacobs will have to call their bluff. They will not throw another guard. They will make an attempt on something in the forefoot, try to lie to right now, or at the very least position their stone so Team Horgan can only remove one red. Gotta say, I agree. The blue-blue combo is so loaded up to get rid of the red stone that uh, you can't guard both. You can't guard the red rock itself and the blue-blue combo. So guard, not going to do you much good in protecting that shot from happening. I think to defend your positioning in the forefoot, you got to come in right now. So that's what they're going to do. Brad Jacobs, first shot in the eighth end. Brad had a beauty to finish the seventh. Just wasn't quite good enough to score two. We'll have to make up for it here. So, two rocks, pretty good positioning, top of the forefoot. I'm thinking Team Jacobs is going to be happy with that. Boom, boom. There's the shot. Blue onto red onto red. Team Horgan knew the whole end. That was the shot they needed to make and that they'd probably only have one crack at it. Brad Jacobs makes it even harder for Tanner Horgan getting another red rock into the forefoot, but Team Horgan makes the angles work. Nice hard throw. Removes and rolls out. Not much Team Jacobs can do. They'll have to accept that there's going to be a blank attempt in the eighth end here. They'll have to reload, refocus. 
Tanner Horgan will not have to throw his last shot. Or, I mean, he'll get in the hack and he'll throw it, but... Aaron would like to see the inside-out turn here. Just getting a sense of what this rock is going to do. And it will be a blank in the eighth end. Team Tanner Horgan come one end closer to entering that 10th end with hammer and a lead. Jacobs will try their best to force a single point out of Tanner Horgan in the ninth end when we come back. At Unibet, Nigel's taking our casino action to the max. Hello, Nigel. Maximizing blackjack and top table games. Deal me in. Optimizing hundreds of slots with jackpots and coin combos. Cha-ching, baby! Arr, ahoy, matey! Ooh, love so many too. My favorite. Nigel is my first mate! I made it say that. Little bit of code. Unibet, home of all the games, home of all the action. Sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Welcome back to Kenora, Ontario. Univet presents Northern Ontario Tankard. Tanner Horgan, really nice shot on his first one to clear out two Jacob Stones in the top four. It was a crowded forefoot, but Team Horgan eventually got rid of the guards, eventually got access to the forefoot. Brad Jacobs on his first stone, electing not to throw a guard, elects to come into the rings. And Tanner Horgan makes him pay. Removes both red stones and rolls out his own blue from the forefoot as well. Sets up a blank end in the eighth. Team Horgan hoping not to come deep. Oh, and they do. That's a big miss. That rock in the back of the button will only serve to provide backing for whatever stone comes next. Team Jacobs knowing how critical it is that somebody scores this end. We'll throw two center guards. Knowing full well that Team Horgan's... That uh, Horgan's team will be throwing peels no matter what. They really got to get this over, though. Big miss followed by even bigger miss. No, you can't hog that rock. Call was for a high guard, so you are playing a little closer to the hog line. But that rock's got to be in play. No tick available, so Team Horgan will try to make good on this this draw that came deep of Colin Hodgson's. Still came a little deep, but better than behind the T line. Gonna make it much more difficult. There we see the time clocks for both teams. Tons of time. Lots of thinking time for both teams. No rush at all here. Jeez, two, two poor execution, two chances missed is what I should say. Team Jacobs, two rocks in the back corner. You can see Brad just trying to recalculate how am I going to make this work?
Tough decision. Brad knows he needs center guards, or he needs some kind of guard. Bit of a tough decision. Doesn't want to guard the Horgan Stones. Knows that he needs some type of way to tempt a miss out of Team Horgan, so they're going to throw a corner guard. Well executed. Good guard up there. Darren can't wait to squat down with his broom and call the hit here. <laughs> Team Horgan knows what gear they're in. Just catching up on the chat here. Lots of thanks for the broadcast. You are welcome, everyone. We're so happy that we can bring these games to so many people. Rob Chandler watching in Nashville. Nail-biting in Nashville. Makes the peel, rolls out. I wonder what Brad will do next. He might have to try a tap. I'm just going to straight freeze for now. Just using what they got. Brantford, Ontario. Dana Dickinson watching from Amanda Clore. It's been exhausting watching four provincial championships in the same week. I know, but hasn't it been so wonderful <laughs> having access to all this curling? Yeah, going to have to book time off work to watch curling. So be it. Team Jacob's kind of desperate now, just trying to get anything they can out of these shots. To the nose. Yep, sets up a pocket. That's a fine result. Team Horgan will do their best to get rid of two stones here. Those two stones in the back of the forefoot, I know they're colored blue, but they're actually enemies of Team Horgan. Team Horgan's idea here is just to make everything go away, carry that all-important hammer into the last end with a one-point cushion. That's a pretty good place to be, and they know it. So as, as nice as scoring a few here would be, Team Horgan's got their eyes on another blank. Darren would love it if his shooter rolled out of the rings as well here. Let's see if Jake Horgan can hold the line. He does. Ah, that's at least a better spot. It's going to be tough to make a freeze on that back rock, although that does, it is pretty significant because that increases the chance of someone scoring this end. That looks like ice to get rid of this, this rock. Let's see what the call here is. Jordan Chandler being asked. This looks like wait for a freeze. Not going to get much of anything out of that shot. And the blank appears to be off. No more interest in a blank because Team Horgan sees an opportunity to more or less end the game right here with a score of three. They know Jacobs will be throwing a freeze or tap or something. He'll have to be perfect. Or else Team Horgan will have the opportunity to remove two red stones for basically the win. That's the thinking with this call. Draw out to the wing. They think Team Jacobs will ignore this stone. And it just becomes another counter. Right off of this one. Doesn't need to slow down. Ooh, this will not stay in the rings. Bit of a whiff there, Darren Molding. It's not going to end up mattering too, too much as far as what Jacobs will end up having to execute. It's all about getting a rock welded on the face of this Horgan stone in the back of the button. Just got to make a good freeze.
Pat Jacobs, his first stone in the ninth end. Trying to fight back. Not a good one, he says. Pretty good shot. They would have loved to keep the slight inside angle on that, but that's that's a frozen rock, shot stone. It's going to force Tanner Horgan to throw a bomb at it if he wants to get rid of it. But the problem for Team Jacobs is Tanner Horgan, one of the best bomb throwers in the game. That's what they got lined up here. Tanner Horgan will be trying to hit as little of the red rock as possible. Spill it out the side of the rings. Well, the spin of the rock, the weight of the stone will push that red rock out of the rings, even though they hit it quite a bit thicker than they wanted to. Brad will now be forced to freeze to this back blue stone. I'll have to make it just slightly better than last time. There's even less of the rings to push this rock out of, meaning it's gonna be even easier for Team Horgan to blast it off, even if Brad makes this perfect. That rock started curling pretty hard when it hit the center line. Sweepers were leaving it and just sort of exploded over on them. That's still such a nice shot. Club curling ice, that's as good of a freeze as you can make. The thing is, these are this is really high performance ice conditions, very lively rocks, and of course, some of the best throwers in the world throwing them. So just leaving that inch of space, that inch of bias on the one side is going to be enough. This blast attempt for the blank is still very possible. Tanner Horgan trying to carry both a one point lead and last rock into the 10th end with a blank attempt here in the ninth. Final stone. Pops it off. The rotation of that stone just explodes it out the side. Jordan Chandler's gonna take one more look at this rock biting the back 12. Looks like Team Jacobs wants to put a stick to this thing, see if it bites the edge of the 12 foot. Why not? Team Horgan's gonna have hammer in the last end anyway. You may as well take any opportunity you can to try and get a single point, tie the game at least. That way you're stealing for the win instead of the tie. We'll bring the measuring stick. Measuring stick passes clean across the stone, meaning that red rock is out of here. It'll be an uphill battle, but certainly not impossible for Team Jacobs. They'll need to steal in the 10th end when we come back to Kenora, Ontario, the Unibet, Northern Ontario Tankard.
Welcome back to Kenora. Team's wasting no time getting this 10th end started. Big mistake. Team Jacobs comes deep on their first guard attempt. That's going to set them one miss behind already. So, instead of getting two center guards up, you now have an opportunity to only put one up. You only need one guard to steal. It's much nicer to have two. Builds you that extra layer of defense as the other team inevitably will be throwing four or five peels in a row. Perfectly thrown guard right where they wanted it. That's a good bounce back. Can't tick this guard, so you'll have to come around if you're Team Horgan. Alan Hodgson was able to throw a hit on his first stone, a little surprisingly. Now we'll be coming to the top four foot, which would have been their original goal to start the end, assuming that Team Jacobs was going to put the center guard up. This is going deep. Definitely a miss. That stone will only serve as a catcher. Still doing something for Team Horgan. Still working in their favor, but not an optimal result. Team Jacobs will have an opportunity now to use their center guard, but we know what's coming next. And that's big weight heel run back attempts for Team Horgan. So. It's a matter of surviving for Team Jacobs. Looks like this is really light. Really light. It's going to make this double peel fairly automatic if you hit anywhere on the right side of this rock. Bit of a shaky slide from Jake Horgan. Horgan. Looks like he did get it back out to the broom. A little panic in the voice. <laughs> Makes it happen. It's a nice shot. Team Jacobs kind of guarding for their life at this point. Really hoping to get one missed guard. One missed peel, I should say, leaving one of their guards around. Really just trying to put this guard in a bit of a different spot. Spot that's a little more difficult to peel. Hoping they get a stuck peel or maybe the, the shooter of shot rock and the team throwing the peel might stick around in the free guard zone somewhere. These are desperation calls for a team that is at the end of the rope here. Choosing to take the out turn. Almost got really lucky there and peeled out their rock in the back eight, which Jacobs is assuming at the end of the end, if he keeps forcing Team Horgan to peel guards, Brad will throw a freeze on that back blue and just hope that Horgan's not able to remove it or that he misses a draw. Could be a reason why he's choosing to guard the wings instead of guarding the center, which you would assume a team trying to steal would do. But I, I think I understand. I think Brad's just trying to put these guards in a place that's going to be a little more unpredictable, slightly tougher to peel, and where they might get a miss that's really going to benefit them.
Well executed peel, Darren Molding. Just seems like a, a forced kind of going through the motions for both teams. Another guard, another peel. Both teams know what's coming. Brad Jacobs knows what's coming. And that's a freeze to the back blue. Back of the rings. Try his best to force Tanner Horgan to throw a draw instead of a hit. Just to force an extra end so they can do it all over again. It's a tough look, but in a one-point game, anything is possible. Darren Molding, his second peel. Be the fourth big weight hit in a row for Team Horgan. And it's the fourth make in a row. That's what you ask of your second and third in ends like this. Make three or four bombs in a row, and that's what's been executed. So mission accomplished, Team Horgan. They have removed every Jacob Stone in sight, other than this rock in the back, eight foot, and Colin's first draw that came a little deep. They have not given Team Jacobs anything to work with. Ninth and tenth ends have been very well managed by Team Horgan. Back to the center line, where Brad Jacobs will go. One more peel coming from Team Horgan. Fairly speedy game we've had play out this afternoon. Each end taking about 14 minutes. That's exactly what it should. One minute reset between ends. Big sweep right out of his hand on this one. Just to make sure that's another made peel. Maybe got it a little thick, but makes the rock go away. And here is the freeze that we've been waiting for all and long. Brad Jacobs will try to weld a rock on that back Horgan stone in the back eight. Hoping to make the freeze good enough that they can force Team Horgan to draw instead of hit. Of course, Team Horgan would still have the option to hit and stick on the nose. It's just a, a little skip, skipper's battle here is the only chance Team Jacobs has. Just maybe forced Tanner Horgan to throw a certain shot that he maybe wouldn't prefer. That's as much of an advantage as Team Jacobs can hope for at this point. Brad Jacobs, last shot, 10th end. C qualifier at the Unibet Northern Ontario Tankard. Both sweepers going pretty hard the whole way down. Let's see how deep they can get this. Great sweep to get it that close. There's going to be a good two feet of separation between these rocks. Tanner's going to have to hit this in a very bad spot in order to jam it. Really impressive game. Lead through skip. Team Horgan. Stayed patient, never got too greedy. Always respected their opponent, always respected Brad to make a big shot. Brad Jacobs did quite a few times during this game, make a big shot to save his team or, or a big shot to try and score multiple points. Go back to the seventh end, that just barely missed shot for two. But at the end of the day, it's Tanner Horgan with the hammer in his hand, up one point, needs to remove a red rock to qualify the page playoff of the Northern Ontario Tankard. Attaboy, he says. Makes it go away. You can hear the fans in the crowd. Big pat on the back for Tanner Horgan there. Great sportsmanship. Love to see that. All class from Team Jacobs.
Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, pawn spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. At Unibet, Nigel's taking our casino action to the max. Hello, Nigel. Maximizing blackjack and top table games. Deal me in. Optimizing hundreds of slots with jackpots and coin combos. Cha-ching, baby! Arr, ahoy, matey! Ooh, love so many or two. My favorite. Nigel is my first mate! I made it say that. Little bit of code. Unibet, home of all the games, home of all the action.